This episode of Film Riot is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Film Riot, I'm comparing my 5D Mark II to the new 5D Mark III. Welcome to Film Riot, the show that takes the mystery out of the effects and techniques of my favorite. Hello, films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley. Today, thanks to a ton of requests from you guys, I'm going to be comparing the 5D Mark III to the 5D Mark II. And if you have the Mark II, is it worth the upgrade to the Mark III? That is what we're going to be testing out today, but I'm taking a much more practical approach. There are a lot of very well done scientific looks at these cameras with charts and all the numbers and goodies. That's not what we're doing here today. Instead, I'm taking sort of the run and gun guerrilla filmmaker look at the two cams against each other. Basically, all the things that drove me nuts about the Mark II, I'll take those things and see how much improvement Canon has done with the Mark III. And now that we understand each other, let's have a quick cutaway of Josh's head photoshopped on something hilarious, and then we'll get to business. So here we go, I have the Mark II, which I own, and the Mark III, which Bruno just bought, and both are on CineStyle, and both have all the exact same settings with the exact same lens. I made sure to keep everything identical. Now, half the time, these cameras will be side by side, so there will be a bit of a different angle difference, but that doesn't really matter. But the other half, I have them in the exact same spots. So the first test I did was to find out if the Mark III has made any improvements to the massively horrible Moray issue, which is easily one of the things I hate most about DSLRs. If you don't know what Moray is, it's this. This ugly, dancing nastiness you get when you film something with tight patterns. Now most of the time this can easily be worked around just by having your talent wear solid colors and problem solved, but then there's times that you're out on location and maybe there's a screen door or a brick house or any other number of things that can cause this to really screw you. So does the Mark III do any better? Here we have the Mark II and the Mark III side by side and as you can see why there still is a slight issue with this shirt here, the more A in the Mark III is far better. With this shirt the footage is just terribly distracting, but on the three, it's hardly noticeable. And with this shirt, again, the two has terribly distracting Moray issue, but on the three, completely gone. So in test one, the Mark III has made my soul leap for joy. This is really one of the most hated issues with the 5D Mark II for me, and the Mark III has completely knocked it out. Hey look, Josh photoshopped. <music> Now that we found out that Moray is dealt with, next up, another giant hate of mine is rolling shutter, which of course is that skewing jello effect that you get from fast movement. First, let's take a look at the Mark II with jelly jellos, and then the Mark III. In this test, the two come pretty close. In fact, they're basically the same. I'm not really seeing much of a difference. If the Mark III has an advantage here, it's so slight that it's not even worth talking about. So let's move on. Next up is something that I was just curious about. While the 5D has decent latitude for a DSLR, I was curious to see if the Mark III did any better in the highlights since once your footage is blown out, that information is completely gone. So I shot Eris in front of an open door and exposed for him letting the outside go super hot. And as it turns out, the Mark III actually is slightly better. In the Mark II footage, the bushes back here are completely gone. No detail in the edges of these branches either. They're all completely crushed, but in the Mark III, we are getting some detail from these bushes and the detail returns to these branches and other areas. Granted, this is only a small amount, but with a camera like this, I have found that every little bit counts, especially when you're grading. So this is another big plus in my book. Next, I want to compare the noise at different levels of ISO on these babies, which I'm starting high at 640 since the lower ISOs on these cameras are relatively clean. And when doing run and gun with minimal lighting, I find that I'm usually at 640 and up anyway. Now I'm going to test this by doing the lens cap test. I'm going to shoot footage with the lens cap on both of the cameras at identical settings. Then in post, I'm going to raise the brightness the exact same amount on both of these cameras to bring out the noise a bit more. So again, here we are side by side with the Mark III on the left and the Mark II on the right. Off the bat, the Mark II seems to be winning. As far as the Mark III, the noise is showing up far more at 640 than it is on the Mark II. So we move to 1250 next, and again, the Mark II actually seemed to be winning in this test here. Then we move to 
3200 and we have a massive change the mark ii is looking horrible but the mark iii looks just about the same as it did at 1250 and again we move up this time to 5000 on both and again the mark iii impresses the mark ii just looks comically bad but the iii is holding up surprisingly well now we move to 6400 and again the same result the mark iii absolutely destroying the mark ii in this low light test and after i saw this i decided to go ridiculous and I put the Mark III at 10,000 ISO versus the Mark II at 5,000. And shockingly enough, the Mark III still seems to be winning. Now, one of the things that I noticed, which I found interesting in the low ISO test was before we put the lens cap on, I could see Eris and the Mark III still seemed to have a nicer image, even though I could see more noise when the cap was on. So I decided to do some more ISO tests, this time looking at a subject, which I'm gonna show you after a Photoshop picture of Sexy Josh and then a message from our sponsor. So if you're looking to start a domain name like, I don't know, HarryFrogLegs.com. That's disgusting. Possibly, it depends on what you're into. You know what I mean? Like maybe it's like chicken wings. You just take oh the my, feathers that, off. That's gross, dude. It could be delicious. I don't know. You just take, you shave it. Why is it hairy? And maybe that's what the website is. They have a devices that you can use to shave the frog legs so the frog legs aren't so hairy anymore. This is brilliant. You go to domain.com and you get your hosting plan. You get your domain name up and going for hairyfroglegs.com. And if that amazing domain name is taken, which I hope it's not, they have a domain discovery system to help you pick one that's close to it that's right for you. And here's the goodness for your hairyfroglegs.com site. You can use the coupon code FILMRIOT at checkout and score 15% off your domain name and web hosting so you can get your Harry Frog Legs domain.com no business up and running. Do it today. Make your presence on the internet's known so we can do something about these Harry Frog Legs. That's really gross. That's what I'm saying. Logo. Okay, back to it. Some ISO square off battleness. So here we have Eris first at 640 ISO. Now why there is less grain in the Mark II, it seems to replace that grain with sort of a muddiness, which seems like it has a lot less detail to me and gives it sort of a lower quality look. So for me, I'm kind of siding with the Mark III on this one, which of course, as you can see here, even as we move to 1250 ISO, and I purposely am leaving it underexposed so that we could really push these images and see the dirty grossness in the dark areas. And again, at 1250, we have the same issue. The Mark II is rendering a much more muddy image for me, but now as we move even higher to 3200, the Mark III is the clear winner. No contest anymore, and the same at 6400, and the Mark III's image at 6400, shockingly usable. But the crazy thing is, which really impressed me, was even with the Mark III at 12,800 ISO, and the Mark II at half that at 6400 ISO, the Mark III still wins. Now that's just nuttier than Squirrel Josh. <laughs> Next up is a quality test, which just to get it out of the way, yes, the Mark III is a bit softer right out of the camera than the Mark II is. And if we zoom in on Eris's eyes, you can clearly see that. But this is an easy fix. Just toss on some sharpening and you're good. Other than that, to my eye, these aren't looking too much different from each other. So I'll toss on a quick grade and still we have the same result. Both images are staying pretty close together. For the last thing I wanted to test, I moved into the studio onto the green screen. I was curious to see if the Mark III would key any easier than the Mark II since keying on a DSLR can be kind of difficult at times. And right off the bat, I noticed that it did key just a touch easier and a bit cleaner as well, but only slightly. But those are the tests that I wanted to run, the few things that I think would make me upgrade or not. And after going through them all, and even though I was very impressed by the low light and the fantastic lack of Marais, would I spend the extra cash to upgrade? I have to say, no, my Mark II is working just fine for me and all the small fixes that the Mark III brings doesn't make me want to throw down the extra cashola for it. Now, if you don't have either, and you're looking to get one or the other, clearly I would go for the Mark III. And it is the much better camera, especially for the obvious things that I didn't cover, like the audio upgrade. With the Mark III, you have a headphone jack for monitoring audio and on-cam levels to monitor audio as well. But the audio issue is also another decently easy fix for me with something like my Juice Link. However, before we go, before I get a bunch of hate, I'm not saying the Mark III isn't the better camera or a bad upgrade. What they added is great and a great upgrade 
update for sure. Just not enough for me to shell out more cash to leave my Mark II. So basically what I'm saying is if you already have a Mark II and you're trying to decide whether to go to the three or stay with the two, I would say stay with the two and use the money to upgrade maybe your lighting or a lens for that matter. But that's it, that's all. You can follow me on Twitter right here and I'll see you guys next week when I hide the hole behind a poster. Burger!